An action is the backbone of your application that deals with logic. Actions have their own flow in which they do various tasks that, ha that happen behind the scene of your application. An action has a start and a finish. And between these two steps, we can create our entire flow. And an action flow is built using action steps. There are different kinds of actions. One action could send out an email, for example. Another one could generate a PDF file. And a third one could do a calculation every night. Let's look into the world of actions and their steps. Action steps are a core part of an action. These steps create your action flow. Actions can contain multiple groups of steps, making an action a feature that can become quite complex. Each action step has its own niche. The authentication segment is used for steps that assist with the security of your application. Think of logging into your application. This needs to be done by action steps specifically designed for authentication. CRUD stands for Create, Read, Update and Delete. Reading we can do ourselves. But we do have three steps to create, update and delete data within our applications. When we use a form or a delete button, most of the stuff will be created for us. But if we want to create an action using these steps from scratch, that's still possible. External action steps are used for setting up connections with data outside of your own application. These steps can help you get data from APIs or for you to provide data to other applications. Flow control steps are useful for when you need to make choices or repeat certain steps. A condition step is a filter with a requirement. When the requirement is met, it returns a true or a false. We can then, based on what it returns, continue our flow. For example, we can only update the status of a project when the project is in progress. If it's already completed, the condition will return false and we can then show the user an error message. But if it's true, then we can update the status of a project. A loop event allows us to iterate through a collection of data. What this means is that in the collection of data, we could have, for example, 20 task objects whose status need to be changed to done. The loop will iterate through every single task object and every time the object status will be updated by events put in the loop. Once the entire collection has been looped through, the flow continues to the next step after the loop. The miscellaneous action steps are a bit special. They have been added there because they currently don't fit into any of the other segments or have been added there by your own pro code department. And every step works with data, also known as variables. The data within our action we refer to as variables. A variable can be seen as an object or a collection of data. Our actions usually start with a set amount of data and return another set of data. Either it has been processed, checked, or something new has been created. Actions stay functioning because of the data they are provided with. Action settings are used to make sure that everyone knows what the action does and is also there to make sure that it can only be executed by the people that have the permission for it. Make sure to provide your action with a proper description, explaining developers around you what kind of awesome logic flow you have created.